Mr. Drew, would you like to come down here and tell us about all the fun and enjoyment we're going to have in filling out our tax returns for next year? Do you think we're going to have a good time? I know he has a good time. He fills out my taxes, you know. I always have a good time. All right, here, here you go. Thank you. You're very welcome. Income taxes. <laughs> Filing season starts on the 27th. If you do your taxes now, you can't even file your tax return until the 27th of January. They won't even look at it until then. All taxes are due by April 15th. You can extend it to August 15th, August, October 15th, but you, all taxes are due April 15th. So even if you extend it, you're supposed to pay what you owe by April 15th without penalties and interest and all that kind of good stuff. Um, if you have to prepare W-2s or have W-2s prepared for a business, or do 1099s or anything, they have to all be done by January 31st. They have to be uh, sent to the uh, IRS and sent to the recipients by the 20, uh, January 31st. Last year, let's see what I got up here. Oh, yeah. Last year, they changed the Form 1040 to advertise that it was just a postcard. Um, they cut cut out everything off of uh, the old 1040 forms and uh, made it just a signature page, and it was a half a page long of two sided, both sides of the paper. And they, they held it up and said, see, we've reduced everybody's taxes down to just a postcard size. But they added six schedules to the 1040 to where they took all the lines off the 1040, put it on six different schedules. And so that's how they, they got around that. Well, this year, they've reduced the size of schedules, so now it's no longer just the size of a postcard. They've increased it. They've added lines back to the 1040. So now we only have three schedules. So now you have the 1040 plus three schedules to do. But they're really nice about things. Let's see. They created a 1040 SR. A 1040 SR is for senior citizens. They increased the size of the font. <laughs> and at the bottom of the thing, it doesn't show here. I don't think it's, oh yeah. You can see it, the standard deduct deduction chart at the bottom. They entered, this, entered the standard deduction chart. Other than that, it doesn't change the 1040 whatsoever. They just wanted to say that they did this for the senior citizens. So there's only two forms this year that you can fill out is it for personal tax returns, is a 1040 or a 1040 SR. There's no 1040A, there's no 1040 easy, none of that stuff, those are all gone. The, uh, the uh, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that uh, started uh, actually two years ago, uh, cut all those out. Um, the standard deduction this year has gone up, gone up from uh, for single, which was $12,000 last year, this year it's $12,200. Uh, for married filing joint, it's gone up to $24,400. And if you're over 65, you get to add $1,300 more onto that. So a uh, married couple of, uh, if you're both over 65, your, your uh, standard deduction is $27,000. There's still no personal exemptions. Um, they were eliminated last year. The only thing is California doesn't conform the Calif on your California taxes, you still have a personal exemption credit. California always gave you a credit, they didn't have an exemption. So the credit is, is that you go ahead and figure out your taxes, and then they subtract credit, off, they give you the credit if you, uh, from your tax, not where they don't take it off. Uh, federal used to take it off your income. California used to take it off your tax. California still does that. Um, California has conformed to very little of the Tax Cuts and Job Act. And so uh, when you have your taxes prepared or you do them, and uh, even if you don't itemize for federal, uh, if you own a home and all this kind of stuff, you still have to itemize because California still recognizes itemization. Their, their standard deduction is a lot lower. And so uh, your itemization will give you a better deduction. 
So you still have to do that, but federally you don't have the, the uh, deductions. Uh, there's no penalty this year for health insurance. Up until now, the, with Obamacare, there was always a, um, if you didn't have health insurance, you had to pay, pay a penalty that was added to your taxes. But starting January 1st, California now will penalize you if you don't have health insurance. Federals won't, federal won't penalize you, but California will. So if you don't have health insurance, you need to get, acquire health insurance because California will give you a penalty. The penalty for a married couple can be $669 to start and could get even more depending on income. Um, around the 20th of December, 2019, just last month, they finally decided to uh, have an extender bill. Congress passed an extender bill, and they made several of the uh, provisions that expired at the end of 2018. They uh, uh, made those retroactive and, and extended them until 2022. Um, some examples of that are uh, like the educator expense if you're a teacher. They give you $250 for your expenses above the line. Um, medical expenses uh, were going up to a 10% threshold. So if you were going to deduct the medical expenses, you had to have over 10% of your income before you could deduct the first dollar. Uh, that's dropped back down to 7.5%. Um, if you have uh, uh, cancellation of debt for if you lose a house or something, which expired, now it's, it's been extended so that you can write off uh, cancellation of debt um, through 2020 for California, or for uh, federal. California doesn't conform to that. If you were to have cancellation of debt, uh, California still, unless you can prove that you are insolvent, you would have to pay uh, tax on, on that, uh, what they would call income for cancellation of debt. I uh, have still alimony payments are not deductible any longer for anybody that got divorced in 2019 uh, and, and for now on alimony is not deductible it's not uh, it's not reportable to the person that receives it it's not deductible to the person that pays it um, moving expenses aren't deductible they are in California but only one caveat with California moving expenses are deductible if you're moving into California uh, if you move somewhere around California, if you go 50 miles from home, from your one home to another home, and you move for work or whatever, it's still deductible in California, um, as long as you stay in California. If you move out of California and you file a California tax return, moving expenses are not deductible. Uh, disaster losses are, uh, they've, they've uh, changed that so that only can be a presidentially declared disaster and you know I really don't even think the president declared the tick fire uh, disaster I know the state did but I don't think the federal did so those people if they've had damages and things uh, um, which uh, any damages above 10 10 percent of their adjusted gross income would be deductible plus a plus hundred dollar floor but um, I don't think it was a presidentially uh, declared disaster, so I don't know if they'll be able to deduct their damages. Uh, solar credits, um, if you had something insta installed last year before the end of the year, you'll receive another 30% credit for that. Um, if you have it installed this year, you go, there will only be a 26% credit next year for, for that, and the following year it drops to 22%. And then uh, in 2021, there's zero credit for any, any solar equipment that you have installed. Um, identity theft is a big thing. And uh, uh, the IRS permits California residents to obtain an identity protection personal identification number. If you feel that you're a victim of uh, identity theft, there's a uh, affidavit that you can fill out. It's a form, and I couldn't tell you the exact number of the form right now. But it's, um, you fill that out and send it to the IRS. But if you, uh, you're worried about identity theft, you can, still, you can still apply for one of these IPN numbers. 
to put on your tax return. So it's called an IPIN number. And uh, a letter will be sent to you every year with a new PIN number on it. And that's what you put on your tax return. But if you're worried about identity theft, that's what, uh, that's what you can do. Uh, for businesses, they, they installed a 20% business uh, credit. It's called a 199A credit. It's 20% of your business, but it's for qualified business income. And uh, for larger businesses or people that make, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars and things like that, some of that uh, um, is, is excluded. And you, it's a big calculation to figure out the 20% credit that they're giving to the businesses now. And the final thing is, uh, is the scams. There's plenty of scams. I'm sure you've got many phone calls saying that the IRS, there's, well, you owe the money to the IRS, and if you don't call this number and, and talk to that agent and pay this amount of money that the sheriff will be coming after you. Well, everything from the IRS, if, they're gonna, if the IRS is going to communicate with you, you're gonna, they're going to communicate with you through snail mail. You'll get a letter in the mail to tell you you have a problem. Um, there's a phone number on each one of those notifications. You should either contact your, uh, your tax preparer, your tax professional, or uh, call the number on, the, on this sheet and talk to the IRS. Don't ignore anything like that if you do get a letter from the IRS. Um, but there's, uh, you know, you, they're getting phone calls. Now there's emails also, an email saying they're from the IRS. And there's always a, a link on there that they want you to click on, or there's an attachment they want you to click on. Don't click on any of those attachments. Don't click on any of those links. They will not contact you by email. They will not contact you by telephone. Once you initiate a contact with them, then that's a different story, but then you'll know who you're talking to. But you will, if you have a problem, or they have a problem, or they want some more information, they will contact you strictly by letter, that's the only way they, uh, they talk to anybody. Um, other than that, there's really very few changes uh, to the personal income taxes this year, except for the 1040 SR, so you can see it better. But um, other than that, they, they, they have not changed a lot. Uh, they're California's did a deal with, uh, with businesses with this uh, AB5, which they're declaring everybody employees, and that's going to be, it's uh, going to be a big fiasco here real soon, and it's gonna be really tough. Uh, most tax professionals, uh, it's gonna be tough to handling it. Uh, if you have a real problem with it, then you need to talk to an attorney, because uh, most tax professionals can't give you legal advice, and we, refuse to give you legal advice. Um, but there's big penalties if you're not, if you're uh, an employee or you th they think you're an employee and you declare yourself an independent contractor, that, that there's big penalties that uh, come out of that. So this is, it's, but that's in motion. Um, truckers have already got an injunction against them so the truckers don't have to, uh, deal with it right now, but there's there's uh, a lot of stuff coming down with that. And I've spent uh, four or five hours listening to people talk about this AB5. It's a wonderful thing. Um, other than that, there's no other changes except uh, taxes start, uh, tax season starts on the 27th and April 15th is the deadline. Are there any questions? I don't have any questions, but I have input. Uh, the latest IRS scam, according to the FCC, are bogus IRS websites. People are out looking, searching for a uh, legitimate IRS website, and they come across a bogus one. The minute you get there, they input malware on your uh, machine to steal all of your interesting information. So if you happen to be going to 
irs.gov, so to speak, if that's what it is, please make sure that you actually are there. Yeah, irs.gov irs is the site. Right, and it'll look identical, and, but it don't go fast. I always say stop and smell the roses. And everybody in this room should have an IRS account as well as a social security account because I, I know pe I give security presentations and I know people who have had their identity stolen just to a small degree enough that they have opened one or the other of those, those accounts and one of the guys in Glendora said it's his, he's going on two years trying to get his uh, IRS stuff figured out because somebody had already set up an account, they had you know put in a phony and gotten money back, and when he filed his, they said, I'm sorry, you've already filed your tax return. Okay, well, so we, if, we all e-file our tax, everybody's tax returns. Any, mm -hmm. any tax professional e-files, it's a requirement right. that everybody e-files. Um, I get them back every once in a while, somebody, they'll send it back and say, uh, rejected, There's somebody already used it, the right. uh, social security number. Um, and if you have an IRS account, there's the thing, and you, for heaven's sakes, well, it's like your pa password manager. Don't lose your PIN number or right. your password because they're not going to give it to you. Right. Um, oh, well, that thought, thought left. Um, the, like I say, the IRS will only contact you with a with, uh, thing. Oh, I know, identity theft. Identity theft is, is a tough I had a client that somebody used his social security number and they said he had unreported income. And they showed that uh, he had some W-2s from some companies here in Santa Clarita. It took us five years to get him situated to where the IRS wasn't bugging him any longer because uh, of these, he had to get it, uh, affidavits from the companies that they, he had never worked for him and all this stuff and everything else. It was, uh, it was a lot of work. We, it was five years to take care of, and this was, I think he had uh, issues for two years worth of taxes, and it took us five years to take care of it. Don't forget to check your credit report three times a year, because that's one of the ways you can catch if somebody has opened accounts in your name, and they're going to a different address, and you don't know about it, and your credit is getting trashed. The the senior form, what age does the IRS declare seniors or is it different age? You know, they never said an age. It's the same form, so I don't think it really matters. Um, most, most every tax preparer will never file a 1040SR. Our computers print out the 1040 when we give it to our clients. Um, the only difference is this one has, I mean, if they, if a client were to request it, then I can, uh, there's a button I could click to, to do it. But uh, there's, the information's the exact same on either one, except this one just gives it on the bottom, in case you want to fill out your own tax return. It tells you what your standard deductions are. And then when you make money on the stock market, do you put that on a different form with a different yes. tax rate? Yeah, it goes, well, stock market stuff goes on a Schedule D. Uh, you don't 80, include? 80, 8849, I believe it is, is what's reported 8849 that goes on a Schedule D. But on the normal form is where you put your interest earned. Well, this year, interest earned goes on to 1040. Yeah. But that's, just, but that's a Schedule B and it gives you a total and then that goes on there. Your totals will go on the 1040. But, they, but you have to fill out these different schedules. Schedule B's for interest, Schedule D's for stocks, Schedule C's business, and Schedule A's itemized deductions. Schedule E's a rent, a rent. Then, then you put them on that postcard one. Oh well, yeah, yeah, and then you send your, your postcard in, which is about, uh, well, it goes e-filed, so you don't send anything in, but uh, most of my clients get 25 to 40 pages per tax return. Anything else? Oh. Anybody else? Is there somebody else? No, go ahead. Just uh, generally speaking, 
Are people paying less under the tax reform? My, my and, experience? Because I, everybody I see on Facebook said, oh, we're paying more, you know? And I, I, it, they are paying more. I mean, unless they are have very high incomes and very high mortgages. Um, yeah, because you get screwed if you have a high mortgage. Right, because, but but because, but, because but your average guy on Facebook is not paying more. Nah, I can't say that. It's kind of a. Well, what what, what is your cut? I mean, at my, what my income level is, do you feel that people are paying more Be, here in California? Because you can't deduct your state. I've got, I've got clients that are, they're making their their uh, their just a gross income. There's about uh, one hundred seventy five thousand dollars. For the two people, one hundred seventy-five to two hundred thousand dollars they make, they ended up paying five thousand dollars more in taxes. Um, my son, they make one hundred and fifty thousand dollars between the two of them. One hundred, no, we have one hundred fifty thousand dollars. They paid a thousand dollars more because you get stuck. Uh, you try to do the itemized deductions. They're itemized deductions. Um, we're above the 24,000 that, that uh, the standard deduction is, so we do those. But uh, you can only deduct $10,000 now of state taxes and property tax. You can only do $10,000. I've got a client that has $12,000 property tax. Any kind of state tax he pays, it's not deductible because he only gets $10,000 total. But the, but the marginal rate declined. The, the rate at which you're being taxed declined. Well, the 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 so yeah, those I'm, did, but you lost your your marginal rates declined, but you lost all your personal exemptions. Also, personal exemptions were were uh, they were four thousand they were four thousand dollars a person, and you lost those. So basically, starting last year, your taxable income was figured on a higher rate. Than before because that came off of your in that became off of your taxable income, the personal exemptions. My son, like I say, my son had three kids. That's twenty thousand dollars. He got personal exemptions for the year before. Last year he got zero for personal exemptions. So his income was twenty thousand dollars higher to where they figured the income on. Yeah, the standard deduction went up, but his standard deductions. His, his, he was already deducting that as it was. So it didn't help him any. So the average guy, it didn't help. If you're retired, these guys like this, this guy over here, he's, he's a happy camper. Me, I didn't. A happy camper. I know, he's always a happy camper. Me, I. Uh, we broke about even. It, it, it didn't hurt us or affect us that much. Uh, the working kids and with families and things like that that are, are, are doing well, uh, some of them it hurt a lot. Some it didn't hurt so bad. It all depends how much you had withheld also. The withholding things have all changed. You know, they, they lowered the withholding tables. And so uh, people were having less withheld. They thought they were making more, you know, they're getting more money on their paycheck. They're getting 20 bucks a week more or 30 bucks a week more. But then when it come time to do their taxes, all of a sudden they went from a $5,000 refund to a $2,000 refund. And they didn't really realize they were getting 20 or $30 a week more. They didn't, you know, it's easy to spend 20 or 30 bucks a week when you, when you, uh, when you get it. If that, you know, my, my other son, he always, he used to get $10,000 refund every year. I'm going, why don't you drop your deduction or your exemptions down so that you, you know, get more during the week. He said, oh, no, I like to have $10,000. Well, you're giving, giving the government $10,000 that the, you're going to get back at the end of the year. He was doing that. Well, he dropped down to two grand. So, and I had some other issues, but still. You're not in the government. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, we'll see what happens this year. It shouldn't change too much. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of changes. Like I said, standard deduction did go up $400. Um, but uh, um, 
Other than that, there's, you know, there's more business changed and things like that. There's different things, and like California's changing. California's changed a bunch to California. After the tax act last year, California used to have an adjustment page where you'd adjust from your federal to your California taxes. Certain things weren't, you know, Social Security doesn't count on, uh, on, ca on California tax returns and that type of thing. Um, so there's a called a Schedule CA, which was uh, your adjustments. That was only two pages. Now it's gone to five pages. Because of the because of the adjustments, um, I have a, uh, a police officer that they used to get all kinds of uh, itemized deductions that were subject to two percent of their income and uh, there's miscellaneous itemized deductions. You know, he he could any ammunition he had to buy when or you know and boot polish and all this other stuff that you deduct, and uh, he lost all that, and uh, but they still get it for California. So you still have to do the same tax return, but uh, federal doesn't do it because it's only you know supposed to have been a postcard. But it, it, it uh, so that it really you know that hasn't changed anything. But uh, taxes are about the same as what they're going to what they were last year. They would probably be close to what they are this year. So anyway, um, if you need a pen, hey, I left some pens back there. If everybody <laughs> wants a pen. They're really and, good uh, pens. Yeah. It's your turn. Yeah, I have a good time. <laughs> <laughs>